Should I be injecting here? Should I inject here? Should I be injecting right here? Or should I inject here? Or... That's it. Totally yeah, yeah, that's the one. Viral TikToks promise massive gains from switching injection sites, but the peer-reviewed data tells us a different story. I'm Dr. Jones DC, and I've struggled with obesity from childhood, lost over 100 pounds, and after a decade of trial and error, I now run a coaching department for a nationwide GLP-1 telemed clinic where our medical team handles prescriptions while I personally coach thousands of patients to lasting success. And let me tell you, what I'm about to share with you is going to completely flip everything you think about your GLP-1 injection sites. I want to tell you about our patient, Maria. She actually spoke to one of our coaches last week, almost in tears, been switching in injection sites every few days for several months. My TikTok feed says this is the secret, but I'm confused more than ever. What Maria didn't realize is she was chasing the wrong problem entirely. Here's what's happening right now. Social media is absolutely exploding with injection site hacks. People are posting about switching from their abdomen to their thigh and suddenly breaking through plateaus. Others claim that their upper arm gives better appetite suppression than anywhere else. The comment sections are filled with, oh my God, this changed everything for me. TikTok kind of has that ability to do so, doesn't it? And I'm genuinely curious. Have you tried switching your injection sites? Did you notice a difference? Drop a comment and let me know what you've experienced because I'm about to share something that might actually explain what's really going on here. But here's the thing that's driving me freaking crazy as a clinician and my providers too as well. When you actually look at the highest level research, I'm talking randomized controlled trials, examining thousands of patients, the data tells a completely different story. I want to tell you about Sarah really quick. She was convinced her Monjaro wasn't working anymore. She had lost 30 pounds over four months. Then she hit a plateau that lasted six weeks. She read online that switching from her abdomen to her thigh would reactivate the medication. So she made the switch, reactivate being the key word here. But guess what? Her excitement, Dr. Jones, it's working again. My appetite is gone. The scale's freaking moving. Like what the hell? Now here's where it gets interesting. Sarah was absolutely certain the injection site change was responsible. But when we dug deeper into her food logs, we discovered something entirely different. What we found out was shocking and it had nothing to do with where she was injecting. Sarah had unconsciously increased her daily calories by about 400 during during those plateau weeks, she gotten really comfortable with her progress and started having just a little extra here and there. The timing of her switch with getting back to stricter eating, which in this case, eating enough, which is a whole nother conversation, was the illusion of the actual causal point. What actually happened here was she broke her plateau. The metabolic downregulation that takes place when you start under eating over extended periods of time. See, everyone thinks injection sites determines absorption, but the FDA looked at that. 45 different medications that get injected under the skin, including ones just like the GLP ones. And the conclusion, the medications are basically bulletproof when it comes to injection site deviations and differences. Here's why this happens, and this is fascinating. Think of GLP one medications like a slow release vitamin versus a shot of espresso. First, these medications are designed to work slowly. Insulin hits your system in about two hours. That's the espresso. But the GLP-1s take about 30 to 72 hours to reach their peak. That's like a time release capsule. The slower something absorbs, the less it matters where you put it. Number two, the medications stick to proteins in your blood like glue. Think of it as a built-in buffer system. Even if one injection site releases the medication a little bit faster or slower, those proteins smooth everything out so you get consistent levels. And then finally, number three, GLP-1s travel through your lymphatic system, basically your body's highway system for removing toxins before it gets into your blood Stream. That highway works the same whether you start from your abdomen, thigh, or arm, unfortunately. But wait, Dr. Jones, what about all these people reporting incredible differences? Didn't you not talk about this in one of your videos recently? <laughs> this brings me to my client, Mark. So Mark was an engineer, very analytical type dude. He starts tracking everything, freaking injection sites, time, food, weight, his energy. He was convinced about his upper arm giving him 20% better appetite suppression compared to his abdomen. <laughs> I remember him sitting in my office. This was when we had our physical locations before we went completely virtual, pulling out this detailed spreadsheet on his phone. I mean, this dude, because we told him like, you don't have to be this detailed unless you really want to. And he's like, oh, Dr. Jones, like I really want to. Scrolling through weeks of data, his face was lit up with excitement as he pointed to the numbers. Look at this pattern, doc. Every time I inject, it's very clear. Tell me I'm crazy, right? And in my head, I'm like, 
yeah, you're dude, you're, you're a little crazy, but the data doesn't lie. I've got correlations across multiple variables is what Mark said. But here's what Mark actually missed. See, when they examined his injection technique using different sites, they discovered he was injecting into muscle tissue 40% of the time when he was using his arms versus proper subcutaneous when using his abdomen. See, intramuscular injection actually does change absorption. It makes it faster and less predictable. So when it comes to GLP-1s, you want to use proper injections. We call this subcutaneous in the fat tissue. There are several legitimate factors that create individual variability, but they're not what people actually think. Injection technique matters most. If you're hitting a muscle instead of fat or injecting too shallow, like not deep enough, that absolutely changes how the medication works. But that's about doing it right, not picking the magic spot. As you can see here, this is a more accurate way to go about doing a subcutaneous injection, an injection into the fat. Tissue health is real. Areas with scar tissue or repeated trauma won't absorb as well. This is why rotation matters. It keeps your injection sites healthy, not because, again, one location is necessarily superior to the other. Let me share something personal. Early on in my GLP-1 coaching practice, my clinicians and I were just like these clients. Like we, because from what we saw, we obsessed over injection sites. We had this one patient, Jennifer, who swore her weight loss stalled when she rotated away from her abdomen. I remember the exact moment everything clicked for one of my docs. It was a Tuesday morning and Jennifer was in her in for her monthly visit. She was frustrated, almost in tears, explaining how the magic spot wasn't so magic anymore. I don't get it. It's not working. Her frustration conveyed to us and very defeated too. I tried everything, Dr. Jones. I went back to my abdomen. I tried again on my thigh, my arm. Nothing's working like it used to. That's when my doctor looked at me and said, we're asking the wrong question entirely. Instead of where should she inject, she only be asking what changed in our overall protocol. Like that's the moment it changed for the way our entire clinic approaches, for the way they practice medicine, for the way I approach coaching. It was a game changer indeed. Jennifer had unknowingly entered what I like to call starvation mode, eating under 800 calories a day because the GLP-1 suppressed her appetite so dramatically, her metabolism had down-regulated, it slowed down, and her body was fighting back. If we kept chasing injections sites instead of addressing the real issue, she'd continue struggling. But if we fixed her nutrition and her metabolic flexibility, we got her eating more and have a system to do so, she'd start losing again, regardless of where she injected. So that's what we did. We increased her protein. We implemented some strategic refeed days. We focused on muscle preservation. And within three weeks, she started losing weight again, using the exact same injection site that she'd been blaming for her plateau. Remember Mark from earlier? Six months later, he called me and he had so much excitement in his voice. Dr. Joe, Remember that analogy you gave me about the whole helicopter and the boulder? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really know what the heck you were saying, but I was picking up the, the overall vibe, but I finally get it now. GLP ones are like a helicopter that has the power to literally lift the boulder up that's rolling down a hill really fast. But if I don't fix what's causing the boulder to get pushed down, my insulin resistance, it doesn't matter where I inject, the boulder's just gonna keep rolling again. That's when I realized Mark had finally grasped what really matters. Here's what actually moves the needle for GLP-1 success. Instead of obsessing over injection sites, focus on addressing the root cause, insulin resistance. When someone's insulin is elevated 75% of the day, instead of a healthy lower number like 15% of the day, their body is in fat storage mode. And you watching this, I can almost guarantee you're in fat storage mode because you wouldn't be watching this if you didn't have weight to lose and you likely are insulin resistant, which is leading to the weight loss issues. Look, I'm not saying that we completely toss out rotating injection sites. It might work for you. There's that individual individual variability, but collectively for most of you, it won't. You know, this makes me think of these two patients I had, Amanda and Rachel. Amanda had become obsessed with injection sites optimization. She rotated weekly. She tracked her performance by location. She even bought different needle lengths to try for different sites. She was constantly adjusting, constantly experimenting, constantly chasing higher doses when sites didn't seem to work. I loved her obsession and intention. It just was focused on the wrong thing. Rachel focused on what I call the boring fundamentals, the flow, the tension pillars of lasting weight loss. She injected the same area each week. She didn't think twice her abdomen. Every now and then she rotated, but she nailed her food. She got into a carnivore diet. She really focused on getting into the intermittent fasting, long form fasting, and she crushed it in the gym. Six months later, guess who had better results? Rachel lost 52 pounds and maintained her muscle mass. Amanda lost 31, but lost a significant amount of muscle mass and constantly felt like she was fighting the medication. 
Amanda was so focused on the 2% factors that she missed the entire 80%. Rachel understood that focusing on the pillars of lasting weight loss trumped anything to do with injections and the results speak for themselves. Now, this doesn't mean injection site rotation is worthless, but we rotate for tissue health, not absorption enhancement, which allows you to not get so fixated on it and like Rachel, do the things that matter most. The research is clear. Repeated injections in the same exact spot can cause a medical condition called lipohypertrophy, which basically is scar tissue formation that actually does impair absorption. So we rotate systematically, not desperately. If this kind of evidence-based breakdown is helping you cut through the GLP-1 noise and the GLP-1 bullshit, hit that subscribe button because I'm breaking down myths like this every single week and you don't want to miss when I tackle the next viral claim that's got everybody all confused. Not to mention, I'm going to help you get some lasting weight loss and keep you on lower doses. If you want a deeper dive into what actually causes weight loss stalls and how to break through them, check out my video on weight loss plateaus. The link will be in the description. That's a real deep dive into exactly how to bust through those plateaus. By the way, we had a call from Amanda last month. Eight months later, her voice was different, calmer, more confident. Dr. Jones, she says, I finally stopped chasing injection sites like Rachel. And I started chasing insulin sensitivity by focusing on fasting and keto. I was going to do carnivore, but I'll do the keto thing. I'll do the keto thing. That conversation reminded me of why we do this work. Here's your action plan. Okay, get a pencil out if you don't have it already. The same fundamentals that transformed Amanda's results. But let me tell you about Lisa real quickly because her story perfectly illustrates the choice every GLP-1 patient makes. Lisa came to us after eight months of site switching obsession. She read every forum, she tried every hack, and she was spending more time thinking about her injection logistics than actual freaking health behaviors. <sighs> Dr. Jones, I feel like I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> Should I inject in the quads? Should I mark my rotation calendar? I saw someone saying left side works better than the right side. I just, I'm freaking confused and I'm kind of annoyed. We gave her two choices, right? Keep chasing injection site mythology or focus on the evidence-based fundamentals that actually drive lasting weight loss. So we simplified everything. Same injection site every week, her abdomen, because it was the most comfortable and accessible, but we optimized everything else that actually matters. Protein, resistance, training, sleep, you name it, we focused on those 10 pillars. Three months later, Lisa had lost another 18 pounds and told me it was the most effortless period of her entire weight loss journey. Okay, now here's your action plan. Choose your injection site based on comfort and accessibility, abdomen, thigh, upper arm. They're all bioequivalent. They're all the same thing according to the FDA research that we discussed earlier. Rotate systematically for tissue health. Don't worry about optimizing from the injections. Take note if one area does work better, great, then maybe use that area more often because that might happen, but don't expect it. Weekly rotations between different areas and choose the region which prevents scar tissue formation the best. For you, perfect your injection technique, proper depth, into the fat tissue, consistent timing and sterile techniques matter infinitely more than freaking where you inject. Focus on the fundamentals that actually drive results. Again, protein intake, resistance training, that whole low dosing narrative where we focus on implementing lifestyle changes and try to stay on the lowest dose, that whole thing. <laughs> the science is clear. The highest level research shows that injection sites don't significantly impact absorption, but addressing insulin resistance through these pillars that we've discussed, that's the real game changer. <laughs> And listen, if you're tired of chasing injection site myths and you want a proven systematic approach to GLP-1 success, one that addresses the root cause of insulin resistance so you can stay on the lowest dose possible, I'll drop a link in the description where you can book a free discovery call with one of my experts. There, they'll create a personalized plan that cuts through all the noise and gets you the lasting results you've been looking for. No injection site obsession required. <laughs> Click that link in the description, book your call, speak with one of my experts, get a good understanding of what we can do for you, and then you make a decision from there as far as where you want to go. We'll see you in the next video. If you guys want to take a deeper dive over the 10 most common mistakes, which will help give you an additional framework after watching this video, check out that video right there where I break down the 10 most common mistakes that patients make on GLP-1 medications. We'll see you later.